Surprise, surprise, I'm seething, but then I'm always seething, this time because of the way the developed world treats the developing world on every possible occasion. We have just finished an international conference on financing for development in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, where the world was to come together to provide the resources to underwrite the sustainable development goals which will be decided upon by the United Nations in September of this year. And of course, when the conference was over, it involved absolutely every country you can imagine, the UN said, it was a breakthrough and historic success and the developing world was generally dismayed. An organization, an NGO like CARE, said it was a hollow shell. Save the Children said they were sleepwalking to failure. Oxfam indicated that the one thing the developing world wanted, which was an international tax body, had been repudiated by the developed world and that was a horrendous setback for the developing world. And of course, one of the NGOs said quite rightly that it wasn't a matter of the glass being half full or half empty. The glass was dry. Just to show you how insubstantial and ridiculous the, the undertakings, the promises were, they agreed by consensus to achieve 0.7% of gross national product as a foreign aid target. That's a target that was decided upon in 1969, 46 years ago. Only a tiny handful of countries has ever reached it. Right now, only five out of the 28 major developed countries have achieved it. Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Luxembourg, and the United Kingdom, and no one else is close. So the goals of climate, of gender equality, of ending poverty will not be reached as a result of this conference. It's just atrocious. And then, of course, I was reading this week the interim assessment report on Ebola, which was prepared for the World Health Organization by Barbara Stocking, the former CEO of Oxfam International. It's a searing indictment of the failure of WHO to respond to Ebola with a number of recommendations made recommendations that the scientific journal The Lancet is very dubious about seeing implemented. Why? Because WHO simply isn't up to it. And I'm going to say what people are saying quietly behind the scenes, but will never say publicly, that Dr. Margaret Chan, as estimable a human being as she may be, is simply not up to the job of reforming WHO as it should be reformed. And so we're not going to get the changes until 2017 when her successor uh, comes into place. And finally, you will have noticed that the Burundi elections were held this week with all of the concomitant violence that always occurs when there are constitutional breaches as these shameless African presidents want to rule forever. It's not just uh, the question of Burundi. Kagame in Rwanda wants a third term, Museveni in Uganda wants a third term, Kabila in the Democratic Republic of the Congo wants a third term, Sesu and Gesso in the Republic of the Congo, another Congo wants a third term, Mugabe, that maniac, has been in power for God knows how many terms. They don't care about the violence that occurs when they attempt to extend their lifelong ambition, these egomaniacal rotters. Well, it's summertime. And in Burundi, the dying is easy. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.